more disturbing video from the Michigan Department of Education. They're advocating for boys and young men to be in the girls' locker room. They also state that there is no physical advantage to boys in sports. A Michigan library was defended and is now private or was defunded and is now privately funded. Taxpayers decided they didn't want to pay for gay indoctrination and now they won't have to. GHAPS is uh, struggling to get it together as they withhold student lecture student lectures from parents and finally the leftist press once again has no interest in the story. They just have interest in getting a Repu- they just have interest in getting a Republican prosecuted. Why do they think that the voting machine workings should be kept a secret from the people? Well, I think you know. I mean, I'm Don. This is the Holmes Politicast. <laughs> All right. Oh, my God. I can't believe that I didn't make sure I had audio before I started this. Kind of disappointing, but we press on. All right. So I'm gonna st- just going to start over. Um, LGBTQ. Michigan Department of Education, they want your children to be showering together, to be, uh, yeah, we're we're just going to leave this all up. So, I'm a little disappointed just because I've been talking for 20 minutes without the mic going through. That's really great. I can hear myself. Nobody else can hear me. The Michigan Department of Education. So that's great. All right. So Michigan Department of Education. I'm just going to let them The Michigan himself. Department of Education's LGBTQ plus himself. students project. We do in-person and online training. We also, uh, we worked with the State Board of Education on their statement and guidance on safe and supportive learning environments for LGBTQ plus students. I see a question just really quick, Kim. Mm-hmm. Uh, how do you answer questions about biological males identifying as female when they clearly have an advantage in, in sports? And I think once again, that's not necessarily based on based on actual fact. Individuals have skills, you know, regardless of what gender was assigned to them at birth. No, you, there's not an automatic advantage. And um, and to term somebody who identifies as transgender as solely biological male, there are biological components, chromosomal components of one's gender identity as well. And so we try not to use that kind of language when describing somebody so who's long. transgender. We we go in accordance with 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 their gender identity. We can say that they were assigned male at birth, but I think that's simply not true. That automatically that they have athletic advantages over cisgender students. It really depends on the sport. It depends on the individual and um, that, you know, when we make an assumption like that, of course, that that would support, you know, the prohibitions on transgender students from being able to participate. But we have to look at the actual medical and scientific facts. So if someone was to make a statement like that, you would, you know, we would want to provide them with information showing um, that trans kids have participated in sports for decades. And there doesn't, you know, the studies show that there is not this unfair competitive advantage, that transgender kids are not, you know, winning every competition and not taking away slots from cisgender students. I mean, we don't say that if someone has a stronger athletic ability between two cisgender people, that somehow they have an unfair competitive advantage. So I think we, we you know, we just want to break it down in terms of facts and science. Bathrooms and locker rooms. Um, and I know Lori commented, uh, provided a resource just briefly, but I, I will, I do want to sort of broaden the response a little bit to say that, um, that students um, students need to be able to use the bathrooms and locker rooms that align with their gender identity. Um, that means that it doesn't nest. So some students will want to use a, a bathroom that um, is like a gender neutral bathroom, um, you know, or a single stall restroom, and that's great. It's a really great option to offer. But you cannot tell transgender students, you can't tell anybody that that's the bathroom that they must use. Um, so you have to, you can provide that and you should provide that as an option. But if a student comes to you and says, I wanna use the bathroom that aligns with my gender identity, 
then they have the right to use the bathroom that aligns with. So <clears throat> you heard this rambling from Jay uh, Coplin, I think was his name. Uh, he is a an ACLU LGBTQ advocate. That's a lot of letters. Uh, American Civil Liberties Union. There are a bunch of lawyers that uh, purportedly fight for civil liberties, but really they just uh, try to destroy our republic. Um, as you can see, that lawyer was not in tune too much with reality. Uh, we look at people like Leah Thomas going from uh, being two, two or three hundredth in men's swimming to all of a sudden now he's a woman and he's winning everything. Uh, it's just a load of steaming, honking bull crap that men do not have a physical advantage over women. And I don't know what this guy's science and data is, but uh, it it's it's belayed by the fact that every time you look at a man that transitions, he dominates every single woman. Now, when I was in high school, I was on the boys' basketball team, and <clears throat> we at one point played the girls' volleyball team in a game of volleyball. Boys basketball against girls volleyball. We killed them. We murdered them. It was like 15 to 2 or something like that. Um, yes, men have a, a physical advantage. And anyone who says that they doesn't is not in tune with reality or they're lying for their own ideological reasons. <clears throat> we can look at Leah Thomas. We can look at uh, that MMA fighter that uh, transitioned and just beat the living tar out of two women. Um, we can look at, I mean, just just about every example of a man transitioning in into women's sports results in the same thing. So, the Michigan Department of Education is confused are they really the ones that should be training our kids are they really the ones that should be uh, talking to our students about what is real what is true what is honorable I think not <clears throat> Michigan Department of Education needs to get it together and uh, hopefully Tudor Dixon will do something about the Michigan Department of Education that is uh, her her uh, area of government that is an executive branch uh, thing. So, uh, Tudor Dixon, I, you got to do something about our Department of Education. All these people with their pron I mean, they're putting their pronouns in their bios to tell you that they are going to teach children about gender identity. They're going to sexually confuse children. And actually, next week, I've, there's a... Uh, great article that just came out from Restoring Ottawa about uh, the link between what these gender activists are doing and what groomers do to children. So that'll be interesting. I'll be reporting on that next week. It literally just came out as I was sitting down with my microphone off um, and talking for 20 minutes. So I haven't had time to really look it over, but we'll get there next week. All right. So it, this will be a short show because I do have somewhere to be at 10. Um, I can't believe I turned everything on, but my mic, you guys, this is, it's crazy. Who? All right. So part three, teen indoctrination, calling all colors and the momentum center. So this is another anonymous, uh, piece by restoring Ottawa. Again, they're a group of parents. Um, by the way, uh, shameless plug for me. If you like what I'm doing, if you like what restore Ottawa is doing, uh, subscribe to their sub stack. You'll get an email alert when they come out with articles. They come out with articles just about every day. Uh, and they are revealing a lot of stuff about the Michigan Department of Education uh, and about Grand Haven Area Public Schools. So, seriously, uh, support citizen journalism. They're doing a lot more than any other uh, journalist is doing, as we will get to. You, you saw the sneak peek there as I was uh, rambling into a microphone without you being able to hear. Um, 
I, probably nobody's here at this point. Uh, at, at least on the live, they were like, oh, shoot, he's off. So uh, we're going to go somewhere else. But for those listening later, for those listening uh, now at this point, um, yeah, go go support citizen journalism because you're not going to get real journalism from journalists. You're not going to get the stories that matter from Craig Mauger, the Detroit News, the Detroit Free Press, M Live. They're in the pockets of the Democrats. They're going to report only what they want to report on. We're going to report what you want to know, what you need to know, and what you need to have a say in your public school. So, with that being said, <clears throat> Haley Barton an adult advisor for the student group Calling All Colors, works with the Anti-Racism Task Force at the Momentum Center. This is not really a surprise. They both have the same goal, teach citizens the correct way to think about racism and work to create activists. There is a difference in not being racist and being anti-racist. Haley Barton is a key GHAPS connection to the Anti-Racism Task Force in regards to Influential teen thinking. Haley is doing an excellent excellent job indoctrinating students without the help of the Anti-Racism Task Force. <clears throat> Her student group has worked diligently and made great strides in indoctrinating their peers. In fact, they created a four-part anti-racism lesson that was given to all Grand Haven area Grand Haven High School students during Academy class. They created a video for Martin Luther King Day that cannot be viewed by parents because it contains student speakers. The video glorifies Black Lives Matters and Black Lives Matter and stated BLM wants to end systemic racism through activi- activism by promoting justice, healing, and freedom, <clears throat> and also by burning down your city. The video also promoted left-wing celebrities. In addition, they created a similar video in honor of Hispanic Month, which explained the difference between Latin, Latina, Latino, and Latinx, and features Julian Castro, a Democratic politician, among others. The Calling All Colors group showed up en masse to a school board meeting to protest parents who want to ban books. The trouble is they were not given accurate information. There are many parents who want the books to be rated and require parental permission before their children have access. But these parents don't want to ban books. Someone lied to these students and used them as activists at a local school board meeting to help further a political agenda. In addition to working with the students at GHAPS, Haley Barton is connected with the Anti-Racism Task Force. Let's see. So we got an email here between Haley Haley Barton and... uh, Barbara Lee Van Horsen, Jane Van Evink, or G- Jane Evink, Brian Wheeler, all that stuff. Um, yeah. This is what our tax dollars are paying for, students learning to become activists and indoctrinate other students. So I've reported on uh, this group's uh, push to get ratings on the books. Um, they, they surely didn't want to ban them. Uh, they did not report anything about getting rid of the books. They simply wanted a rating system for content, explicit content and indoctrination level so that parents could decide whether or not they wanted their children reading these books. Now this sounds familiar. In Florida, there was a bill that, uh, made it so that parents have to be informed about the psychological treatment that their children were getting. If they were seeing the school therapist, they needed to be informed. Parents needed to be informed about their students' change in gender identity, their change in name, their change in other things. And we reported last week that the Michigan Department of Education is not interested in keeping parents in the loop. They want you out of the loop. They want you to be separated from your children. They want you to 
They want your children to feel like they can't come and talk to you. They want your children to feel unsafe with you. <clears throat> that is that is the goal of the Department of Education. They they don't want their chi- your children to have you involved in their lives. So we need to send a message to the public schools. Uh, Tudor Dixon needs to do something about our Department of Education. Like I said, they're putting their pronouns in their... Uh, in their bios for a reason they're putting their pronouns on uh, zoom for a reason they are they are showing you where their allegiances lie Uh, and so we need to get rid of these people get some people into the department of education that are not crazy that are not confused that are going to teach our children truth and fact from lies and fiction all right restoring ottawa again doing great work go subscribe to their Substack. Do it. I'm not asking. I'm telling. I'm just kidding. I can't make you, unfortunately. But uh, I'm saying that you definitely should. All right. So we have Restoring Ottawa doing awesome citizen journalism work. Uh, they are just killing it. Uh, they've got great articles. They've got proof for what they're saying. They've got everything. <clears throat> now, uh Detroit Free Press, not so much. <laughs> they, they are reporting news selectively. They, they uh, pay for Governor Whitmer's ads. Um, they really like her. They really like Democrats. So I've seen Craig Mogger talking about this. I've seen Chad Livingood talking about this. So Detroit News, Detroit Free Press, uh, M Live, uh, Cranes Detroit. I mean, all of those. They're all in the left wing pocket. So here's the story Matthew DiPerno has gotten access to a voting machine, um, uh, one of the tabulators, something that, you know, you put their ballot in there and it counts it. Um, now, the leftist press is just losing their minds. They are incensed. All they want to know is where the machine is and how he got his hands on it. They don't want to know what he found, which is understandable, a little bit. They don't want to know how the voting machine works, which is not understandable at all. Uh, I want to know exactly what's going on with these voting machines i want to know uh so so matthew DePerno, just for the record has been denied access to just about every part of our election nobody wants him looking into our 2020 election not not a single person uh in the left-wing media not a single person in the government i know a lot of people a lot of regular citizens that want him to be able to look into the election I know a lot of regular citizens that want a lot of different people to be able to look in the election. Um, I think we should be able to see ballots. I think we should be able to um, do a uh, an, a- an analysis of, you know, are these ballots, have, have these actually been used by people? Um, are, you know, especially with the, the signature matching just going right out the window last time. There were a lot of problems. Jocelyn Benson did a lot of things unconstitutional in our last election. And I think we deserve to have our rules observed in an election. So Matt DiPerno has got one of these voting machines and uh, everybody's trying to figure out how long they can throw him in jail for. Um, So Michigan GOP, so we get to the article now. Michigan GOP Attorney General Candidate Matt, Matt DiPerno is not the only one in the national spotlight after state investigators accused him of participating in a conspiracy to access voting machines in the wake of the 2020 presidential election. Oh, no, what a conspiracy. They wanted access to the voting machines. Oh, absurd. What a what a, a threat to our democracy. Oh. DiPerno was part of a nine-person team now at the center of the criminal probe, according to the Office of Michigan Attorney General Dana Nessel. So she'll she'll definitely prosecute the accessing of a voting machine 
Uh, she won't prosecute for abortion, though. She won't. She won't uphold our actual laws. Uh, but she'll keep them voting machines secure from any citizen that wants to look at them. Dana Nessel's office, along with Michigan State Police, are investigating a plot, quote, to unlawfully obtain access to voting machines. Again, they 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 are so they are so incensed with this. They are so upset by it. Used in the 2020 presidential election and recently petitioned an independent arm of the attorney's general's office to appoint a special prosecutor to determine whether criminal charges should be brought against those alleged allegedly involved. The group includes those who seized ballot tabulators, broke into them, and assisted in gaining unauthorized access to the machines, according to a petition from Nestle's office. The petition claims that DePerno, De, DePerno, oh, DePerno, lawyer Stephanie Lambert Juntilla, and state representative Dare Rendon of Lake City quote, orchestrated a coordinated plan to gain access to voting tabulators from Roscommon County, Richfield Township, Irving Township, and Lake City Township. A group of four subsequently handled the investigation to conduct its own election review, according to the petition from the Atten Attorney General's office. That team included Ben Cotton, Jeff Lenberg, Doug Logan, and James Penrose. DePerno's campaign issued a statement sad Sunday denying the allegations. The Free Press attempted to contact the other eight individuals named in the petition. Requests for comments were either denied or went unreturned. I wonder why. Here's what we know about those accused in the voting machine probe. Ben Cotton has more than 25 years of experience, quote, performing compu computer forensics and other digital systems analyses. According to an affidavit, he filed to help DePerno in the interim county lawsuit. He funded a company called Cypher, which served as a contractor for Cyber Ninjas, a company run by Doug Logan that assisted in efforts to undermine election results across the country. Undermine election results. Uh, maybe confirm election results would be more accurate. But Matt DiPerno. DiPerno has the largest public and political profile of the nine people accused. He worked for years as a private attorney in the Kalamazoo area before diving into politics. Although he unsuccessfully ran for county commissioner years ago, he truly entered the national Republican discourse when he took on a 2020 election fraud lawsuit tied to human error in Antrim County. So we know about that. Um, Matt DiPerno, uh, you know, I, I don't know exactly what he has. Uh, they just have profiles on the rest of the people. I'm not going to read them. I don't care. Um, they, they're probably mostly fabricated anyway. They... The, the, the left-wing media likes to um, present stuff in a way that makes it seem as though these people are, you know, crazy, that they're uh, unreliable, um, like stating that Matthew DiPerno is trying to, you know, quote, undermine elections. So they've got a full profile on eight different individuals. They can't get a single paragraph on how voting machines work, on why we should trust the voting machines, on anything that would cast dispersions on the election. Because we've got to protect this election. We've got to protect Democrats. All right. So I have a couple more minutes. Uh, and then I'm shutting down because I wasted 20 minutes of my time earlier uh, talking to myself. And I have somewhere to be at 10. So thousands raised. So this is the last one. Thousands raised an online fundraiser after Michigan Library is defunded over LGBTQ plus books. So what's the story? Jamestown Township, uh, which is very close to me. Uh, it is in... Ottawa, Ottawa County? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's in Ottawa County. Uh, they voted to defund their uh, local library. August 2nd vote. Uh, they defeated a proposal to, re to renew a property tax millage that funds most of its local library's budget. 
Why did they do this? Well, because they were pushing uh, a bunch of gay books, a bunch of gay, transgender, uh, leftist books. So the people of Jamestown decided that they are not going to pay for this garbage to be on the on the public market. They're not going to pay for this garbage to be available to children and pushed on children and, um, you know, have drag queens come in and read this to children. So there, some lady is raising, she raised like $100,000 to keep the door open. Uh, operating costs are about $245,000 a year. So they've got a little under half of that. Um, so that is an example of using your political power to make change in your county. Uh, if this library wants to be privately funded, that's fine. Uh, it's not illegal to have those books yet. Um, maybe we can consider making some of these books illegal. But... I don't think that a conservative county should have to pay to have leftist books from Democrats on their shelves available to their children. All right. That's all that we have time for today. I have got to get running. Um, next week we have John DeBlay. Uh, he is a precinct delegate here in Ottawa County. Uh, he will be giving us a rundown on the inner workings of precinct delegacy uh, he will be telling us about how the convention went, a little bit about his training. So that'll be really good. You don't want to miss that. Also, we have a story next week about the connection between what the leftists are doing to children and what groomers, you know, pedophiles do to children. Uh, we'll have all that. Plus, uh, I don't know, whatever happens with this DiPerno thing, we're going to be keeping an eye on that. Uh, until then... Uh, make sure you're staying informed. Don't trust the media. Like my page. Go and subscribe to Restore Ottawa. Let's see. Anything else that I wanted to tell you? Uh, I don't think that... I think that's about it. Yeah. So, do all those things. Uh, keep citizen journalism alive because if you don't, uh, then you just got like the Detroit Free Press who pays for Governor Whitmer's ads. All right. That's it for today. I am Anon Don. This is the Homeless Politicast. You guys have a great week. We'll see you next week. Mm -hmm.